There it is. The red light. That's it, my friend. I live for that. <laughs> <laughs> live for the red light. I see the red light. You need a little sign there saying on air. I used to have, I have one of those in my little home oh, studio. Oh, yeah. I'm, those are cool. That'd be a good thing to have. So Yeah, I can get them. I, I, like I said, I have one in Vegas. I, I built a whole studio there. Right. Okay. Let's go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, this is Chris. This is Costello. How you doing there, Mr. Costello? I'm fine. A little windy, perhaps. But, um, hey, you know what? We're bearing up and we survived two hurricanes. Well, one. I've been through three. So let me know when you get to port and we'll talk, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. That'll be probably later next week. Hurricane, hurricane. who cares? Yeah. No problem, right? Re right. Yeah. The insurance exactly. on the house will cover it. No problem. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. we, we have these new uh, marketing people. We have these new producers and all these things. And, and come with that, we have a mm -hmm. new name. We should be shorter. We used to be, because of our radio background, we were the canceled radio guys. And now we are the canceled guys. <laughs> Which is basically saying we don't have to be on the radio to be canceled. We can just get canceled anywhere, so right? Yeah. Well, it used to be the original canceled radio guys. But and the so marketing just, guys go, no, you're just going to be the canceled guys. Okay. So how is anybody going to know that we were both industrious radio guys back in the, in the 80s and 90s? Huh? So we're going to huh? tell everybody. We're going to say why. every time. We're going to tell everybody. We're going to talk about some of that today, too, anyway. So Two wacky guys. See, see how spunky and happy you look today, Costello? And you know why that is, right? I'm going to uh, tell you. Tell me. <laughs> I'm tell, you. tell me. Uh, you know, the past couple of months, Costello hasn't been feeling so good. He's kind of just stuck in the home, you know, a little down, need to pick me up. So I suggested to Costello, hey, Costello, Kamala Harris has got a big rally coming up in Savannah down the street. Why don't you okay. go to that? You can get some good audio and it will be great for the show. And you're only two hours away. Costello goes, you know, get busy. Things come up. Uh, didn't, couldn't make that one, so I'm not going to do it. I said, all right, well, we'll let that go. Opportunity. Then, big show for Saturday, ESPN, ESPN Game Day Live is right there in your backyard, mm -hmm. you know, 15 minutes away over at the University of South Carolina. Yep. They broadcast it live. I'm going, Costello, go to that. It's going to be thousands of people. You get some great audio for the show. It'll be fantastic. Costello, yay. He, I call him, he goes, I just woke up. I'm going to, damn it, the show's over. <laughs> he missed this good game. Day. I thought I was good till midday. It was <laughs> over at 11. God. I, I'm going, what's it going to take to get this, get him out of the friggin' home, get him into the show and stuff? And so then a week ago, your daughter's coming in from Vegas that she wants to mm -hmm. go see a concert there in Charlotte. Right. Well, guess who's getting out of the house now? Costello finally got off his white carcass and went out of the house because your daughter was the one who pushed the button to get you to go. Oh, I had to. There's no question about that. You know, when when they when they they call, I move. Daddy has to go. So you went to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. went she to was Charlotte. there. She saw she, a band. She got you a nice hotel room. She took care of you, right? Garden downtown. Yep. Downtown yep. Charlotte. About was about two blocks. <laughs> you went to the amphitheater. So what, what, she traveled all the way from Vegas to North Carolina. So what's who's the band? Like there must have been something oh, special. God. Who was it? Um, um, oh, we're getting feedback from somewhere. How weird. Uh, I they're like called 10th Avenue or something like that. Well, who the hell are they? Oh, well, precisely, I didn't know, but you know what? That place was full. Um, the amphitheater, outdoor amphitheater, very nice place. How many seats would you say? How many people? Ooh. We have to compare rally sites here. You don't say how many people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would say probably about 3,000. Okay, so to, it's a mean, really, but I mean you know it's SRO, so that was cool, and people were sitting on the banks and everything. And what kind of music did they play? A kind of poppy, jazzy kind of pop music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, you know what? When you see something like that live, it's a whole different thing, and it was good. They were very good musicians. Um, presentation was great. The drama was brilliant. Was that and good I to come all the way from Vegas to North Carolina to see, to see those guys? Dude? Well, I mean, I guess you thought I could see Dad at the same time, you know. Okay, so, um, yeah, yeah. that yeah. worked out good. But you, at least you got your damn ass out of the house and went and did something, you know. I, I, amen, brother. Amen. I've got a motorcycle sitting in a shed there, and it's, it's 
think so. It's covered, it's covered in dust. You don't do anything. But and uh, then after you, she got you out, you had a great time. Then you took advantage of her. You brought her back to Columbia, your home. Mm. And you had to clean your whole damn house. Jesus. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I what, what are you doing here? This place is a pigsty. You clean the whole house for you while you and you sit there and just enjoy it all. Just went, ah. uh, well, I, I got rid of the pigsty element of the house. I, I had actually worked hard on it myself, but it wasn't up to her standard. Okay. I mean, I didn't expect it because she's got a really high standard. One time, uh, both the kids came down here and I had the place I thought was spotless. In fact, I'd even paid somebody to come in. And to you, it. spotless to you. To, to me. Yeah, I've been in the car you thought was spotless, and there's dog shit in the front seat. Okay, so oh, <laughs> under a towel, I might add. All I the shit was under a towel, so I could sit on the <laughs> towel and sit on top of the shit. Okay, I was cleaning that out for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was, but anyway, so so Allison comes here. Uh, well, they they come here, and like yeah, they they're going. Oh, you know, next thing I know, they say, "Well, Dad, we'll be back in a minute." Go, they go out to Target and go and get four oh nine and cleaners and sponges and all kinds of stuff. And uh, I'm going, you know, I clean to go, yeah, Dad, you did, sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with her. I understand what she means, yeah. You know, but. I know, you, but, we, we've seen your type of cleaning, okay? Oh, yeah? Oh, well, <laughs> you're going by the car. That's not See fair. that shirt Costello's wearing? He last washed that. It was like 1998. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. We just, um, but anyway, so, no, we're we're on, on the path to redemption. And as far as cleaning the house, finally. And, um. No, I mean, you know what? It just it got ridiculous. Just that. have her come down more often, you know. So, but I like your daughter, Allison. She's really cool. And I actually clicked on my Instagram account to follow her. Oh, and really? he goes, for Allison, he goes, This account is private. She has to accept you first. I went, Excuse me, be that way. So, listen, I'll have to wait and see if she's going to accept me now so mm. I can follow her. So, no. Oh. She goes, Me. Well, you know what? Um, I was working with our producers the other day because they want us to have all this. Um, uh, you know, there's Facebook and stuff. Now, Facebook and Instagram have both. Can I, can I introduce them real quick? We have our producer. They are in France. They're yes. marketers and they actually live in the south of France. Mm -hmm. And only we can get guys like this. So we have two producers. Their name is Anus and Sour. <laughs> Party guy. Yeah, they are. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Just put your head. Anus and Sour, south of France, one of the most beautiful parts in the world. But there they are. So anyway, they decided for marketing we should have all new accounts like um, oh I don't know X or gmail.com doing all this stuff you see. So anyway, so they we get a, a new uh, Facebook account and Instagram and all it's and it comes back and it says I'm sorry you're not up to our standards <laughs> and they blocked us. I put nothing on there yet. Is it? you're not up to community standards? But I don't know what. Did they put something up? Did, did we haven't put anything up? Can't get there. We're canceled, which is apropos. Right, well, see, now you now you're catching up. We already canceled guys. So mm -hmm. did yeah. they post something that we don't know about that they didn't like. No, no. I mean, I was I was there so with we're them. Canceled even before posting. Precisely. Holy crap! We're just we, we can't lose here. Okay. <laughs> we can get canceled. All right. No, yeah, but the thing is, we do have uh, we we do have a. Instagram page, and we also have a Facebook page anyway, but he wanted to do all new ones. So uh, if you want to find us on Facebook, uh, Chris and Costello, that'll find us. That's it. It's Chris and Costello. Mm -hmm. Not to put canceled. Not no to put canceled. anus and sour, nothing like that. Just no, no, nothing. I'm just, I'm just looking here uh, to find that. Where was that? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll fix it all anyway, and we'll be terribly famous and They'll run this clip going, gosh, look at you guys. Couldn't afford a razor blade, could you? Nope. <laughs> okay. You had a good time. A good time with your daughter and stuff. Oh, we'll yeah. Work, we'll work out these new things with our with our producers and marketers here. Okay. <laughs> the Frenchies. Hey, this is sour. All right, I'm going to run this by here. And so you tell me if you got any suggestions that's ever happened to you, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll try to make this really short, but it's just really, I just can't believe this shit. Okay. <laughs> so two weeks ago, uh, uh, my wife gets a notice on her, her bank account that they're closing it, okay? Because I, I guess she signed up for a thing where you have to keep us use a certain amount or keep a certain amount in there. And usually if, if you don't do that, they just kind of maybe use our little fee each month or something. But because she didn't do that, they decided, nope, well, we're just going to close your account. They didn't give you any notice. When you go out trying to use a car, you go, why isn't it working? You mm -hmm. call it and go, oh, well, we closed your account. 
They don't give the specific reason except for the one we got there. You didn't use it the proper way. So they just closed it. And whatever in there will be sent to you in a check. So, okay. So she's gone. So she goes, opens a new account at a different bank. Because we have a, a check coming in. We've been waiting for the settlement thing. It finally showed up. So we decided to, let's take it and just open a special account for that right down the street at a bank close to us at the foot of our neighbor called Chase. Okay. So we mm -hmm. go there. Take them to the bank and it goes a little larger than normal. So it's going to take uh, to, it's going to take a couple weeks for it to clear. We expected that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we wait. I guess it's probably clear October 5th. It did. And we saw it in there October 5th and 6th. I didn't worry about looking at it again. So I activated my wife's debit card that goes with that account. So there's no account by that number. You know, so I went to my mobile, looked it up and said, there's nothing in there either. I went, holy crap. So we go down to the, the branch and go, where is it? I did. Of course, you're near. Tapping away, looking at stuff, and they're going, oh, um, well, we couldn't verify the signature we, because we need to verify the, the issuer. I said, well, his name and his phone number right there in the check. Yeah, but we have a database we run, so we run the number first, and the number didn't show up with the guy's name who signed it. That's why you just call him. The number's on the check. It doesn't work that way. Since we can't verify it, so we're, we're closing your account. I said, we haven't, we haven't used it yet. I said, where's the money? Well, we 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 cash the money and we revert it to a cashier's check and they'll be mailed to you. You get that in about 14 days. So we wasted two weeks waiting for it to clear. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to wait two more weeks for them to send it to us. And we have to go to another bank, which will take another two weeks for it to clear again. A month and a half waiting to get our money. OK, so now we're waiting for this check to come back to us that they reissued what you haven't gotten yet. So today I get these notices. My phone is dinging. You know, I have, this is a different account that I have. OK. And it's U.S. Bank. So mm -hmm. how many accounts do we have? Uh, so it's, uh, it's just dinging away. It goes, well, your, your Apple Pay is not going through and all this stuff. I'm going, what are you talking about? So I click on my mobile app on that one, and the accounts disappear. I call them. I'm going, I'm freaking out here. I got my government payment coming in on Wednesday, and you and this says there's nothing here. I'm going to hold like 20 minutes. Oh, oh well, we, we forced closed your account. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. I said, for what? You know? They don't give us reason, sir. You know, just we just forced to close your account. I said, well, I have a government deposit coming in on Wednesday. Can you keep it open until then, please, this anyway? Because there's no there's, there's no time to change it. Uh, it'll I'll be screwed. I won't see that for a month or so because you're doing that. I put you on hold. Okay, stay. And they come back. Nope, can't help you. So sorry, close the oh. account. So we have no means to use any debit cards. We have no money coming through. We have no place to put it. We have a place to, I have to go down and try to open a new account today and. Redo my government payment. I'll be screwed out of that for another month and a half. So I don't. Is there something going on out there? I don't know about what's this. What these force well, closing accounts going to feel like it? I mean, we had never done anything wrong with these people. I just, they just, we just use accounts like normal people do. Put money in, pay bills, use a debit card, put money in, withdraw. Hmm. They, I think oh, sometimes. Been, what? 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 what, what? Been, thing now? That one's been screwing with you for a while, anyway, haven't they? Yeah, back and forth. We had we've been hacked a few times on that, but you know hmm. it's. It's so always we always catch it, and they, they've been kind of helpful, and they've been wanted to they change my card a few times just to be protective and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, well, we're sick of this guy, you know. So let's just close him out. So, but I mean, they weren't they weren't paying bills that they were supposed to pay. They're yeah, right because they closed it without telling. Oh well, now they well, have. They go, didn't you get a letter? I said, Dad, no. Well, we sent one to you. To, 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 yeah. well, you didn't get it. You know? It's like my insurance uh, sent me a letter and texted me and. Uh, what else do they do? Um, emailed me. Now, if, if you'd done all those three things, I would have caught at least one of them. That's what I said. I said, you said, yeah, I, I find out because I'm trying to pay something I'm used to doing, mm. and, and it's, it wouldn't go through. So I'd go to look and see what's wrong with my account, and it's closed. That's how I found out. Same way my wife found out. So we have had, we've lost three accounts in, in three weeks and done nothing to deserve it. I, I don't, is this a new way? Of, I, I remember at, you can do a, a bank once before, but he said it's kind of a thing they do. They don't, they you know, just close they reasons are. like we, this person not active enough or this or who knows what. I don't know what to do. If they don't even tell the branch people, they go, maybe, maybe, don't you should, the maybe you should try a credit union because they generally a, get to know you as a person. Because it's small. What's that? And so I actually try to crack you at the end of the street and have him bank with him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I mean, I, it's just crazy, man. So I have to, have to go figure this out today. I don't know. We're just like, we, how do we pay bills? We, just, we have nothing at the moment. So anyway. Oh, fun. fun. Yeah, that's fun. I've, uh, yeah. Here I am. Here I am. Just and for your sister. I'm still happy. <laughs> Smile. I'm still smiling. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm a smiling for you, fool. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's really frustrating, and they never you can never get to someone who can actually do something about it. Well, they, uh, I was on the 800 number. Well, you don't know, sir. We, we can't tell you that. You said you get a letter. So I, so I said, I'm going to the branch then. So I go to the branch there, and they're like pecking away and going, oh, yeah, they closed it. Why? Well, we don't know. They don't tell us that. They just do. I said, okay. So I'll just take my money now. Thank you. One, because the account wasn't used properly, used enough. One was because they couldn't verify the number and the name together, which is on the check. And if this is the guy who sent you the check, he's like, a, he's, a, he's, I'll put this, he's a Fed, okay? Mm -hmm. So I called him. I had him on the phone. I had two cell phones up. They yelled at the guy. He's going, they're never my fucking 25 years. This shit happened. My name's on the deck. Just call me. Oh, how do we know what you, and he's, he's, he's like livid, you know? He's mm -hmm. a lawyer. He's going, I'm going to freaking sue you ass. <laughs> it's still my name. I don't care. Well, too bad. Do what you want to do. You know, I said, man, what a freaking nightmare. It's like Halloween. You see behind me here? You see my Halloween radio? You like that? I, I see that. Yeah. That's my Halloween radio. Hang on. <laughs> Watch the screen. I can see it. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's probably what we look like. <laughs> okay. Hi. That's it, huh? Cool. <laughs> I, I like the way it signs off. You see the face come out of the screen? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, well, okay. We like Halloween around here, so I, I got all kinds of cool. animatronics around here and stuff at night when I can't see too well, you know? Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to waste electricity, so I'll walk around with my my Halloween candelabra. <laughs> Check the skulls out. Yes, sir. I, I, I see that. Yeah. Very cool. Very goth. I turn on at night, so I just kind of like do the – who needs uh, who needs uh, candles and stuff? You know, who needs matches? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's too bright. So anyway, it's really light up. Costello the goth. Um, baby we're, boomers. We're the uh, canceled ghouls, okay? Yeah. Canceled baby boomers. Ghouls. Baby boomers. We can baby. That's what we got to talk about. We got to talk about some baby boomer stuff here. So hang on. Let me put down this thing. No, well, I mean, oh, we just, we are. Canceled, canceled bank accounts. That's very baby boomers. Uh, I'm just totally, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm nothing. Never mm -hmm. existed. I'm just been totally wiped out. No bank, no nothing. I'm just, just a nobody. I'm just a canceled guy. You, you're the oh, other canceled guy. It's like my car insurance just canceled in uh, in, in July. Because you had and dog shit in your car. That's why they canceled you. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, well, no, I got no. I had this this car by then, or or maybe I. And point is, I've been driving around since uh, July with no, with insurance. no car insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I don't know state, but in this state, if you get caught with no car insurance, you're in big. You're in, they, you, that's they big, big shit. trouble. Has yeah. big big to do. Yeah. Yeah, probably is here too. I don't know. I want to care. find out. Hmm? Well, so, there's, there's so now they, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, now they, my premium has gone from sixty dollars a month to one hundred and eighty. Trust me, I'm be looking for. Um, I'm, I'll be going somewhere else. Well, just add it to the list. Okay, look for new car insurance. Look for a new bank. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have to. I got to notice that they have to get. I have to get new home insurance too, so I have to get that. So yeah, because because the, the old well, place just they, they just canceled, not because of this. Is they're just don't want to cover people anymore. So they canceled other clients. They don't do home insurance. I get a new home home insurance. It's just like mm -hmm. bank, home insurance. What's going to be next? Holy yeah, crap. So, boy. Well, we got the, you know, everyone seems to be focused. You can't help it because everywhere you look, but we're getting close to the election day. Thank mm -hmm. God, you know. Finally. I'm still surprised if their pollsters are right. You know, they can be wrong a lot. It's even still as close as it is. And every day, some new stuff comes out about Trump. Big exaggeration. Nice. Oh, FEMA at households, the Republican households get no money and no help. What? Mm -hmm. He's uh, in Aurora. There's, there's terrorist gangs taking over the city. He's here in Colorado today. My God. He wanted to come see for himself. He goes, I may never make it out alive. Well, we hope you don't. You know, but, you know, we can only be so lucky. And, and I don't know. I don't understand why it's still so close. And every day, some new shit comes out of him. It's just awful. Uh, for, give you a re All these world leaders going, they're scared if he wins again. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants it, but it's this group of uneducated rednecks who just, just flock to him and they believe no, everything he says is true. You know, uh, FEMA's not helping Republican families in, in Florida. They believe it. That's just it's amazing it's, uh, what they believe is going on. So, do so you Kamala, remember, who's you remember our choice? 
right. you remember when he went to um, Haiti? And they've been flooded out there, right? And his answer was to throw a kitchen towel. Oh, it's Puerto Rico, man. Uh, Puerto Rico, yeah. Yeah. And just, he, so he's sewing up paper towels to people. They need money, they need shelter, they need water. And he's throwing them toilet, toilet, uh, you know, here's some paper towels. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Don't get me sorry. But the camel's been out. She's going, okay, I'm going to, so we're getting near. So I'm going to go out and, and do appearances on places that are, I guess, reaching different. Hello, I think we lost you. She had to do the, the news thing. She did 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. One that a lot of people are upset over, and it's the people who listen to this woman's podcast are upset over is the what was it the Who's Your Daddy podcast? Is that it? I'm your daddy, daddy, daddy. Oh, yeah. Who's your daddy? Yeah. Who's your daddy? Yeah. It's it's a uh, basically sorry, it's a podcast for, for young women in their 20s, those 30s, to talk about a lot less sex stuff, you know, what's your what's your favorite sex position, what's this, what's that, who you screw and whatever. And they're going, but it's a large audience of young women. I mean, they just paid this uh, uh, the host 50 million bucks for her podcast. So we're going, we're, we're for sale too. Okay. <laughs> we're sluts. We'll go cheaper than that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We can, we can talk about that too. So, I mean, it's just let you know, a just, memory, but you know, I mean, Kamala is coming on our show next week. She couldn't make it this week. Obviously very busy schedule. So we're excited. Mm -hmm. She'll be on our podcast next week. So not just the who's your daddy. She'll be on the canceled guys show next week. So that's right. going to be the fun. canceled guys. I'm looking forward to that. But then, so that she got grief from the audience of that podcast because they stopped what they normally talk about, which is you know, young women's sexual fantasies and stuff to talk a little bit about politics. Uh, Alex Cooper, the host is like, she just, Softball questions. She's not a political person. She's not a political interviewer, you know. She just threw some lobs them out there, you know. And after that, she did uh, uh, the View. Did a good job. Mm -hmm. She was on Stephen Colbert. She had a beer with Stephen Colbert, you know. So uh, that was kind of funny. And then here's the here's the big thing. I have in question. She did the Howard Stern show for about an hour. Okay. Ooh. Now okay. Stern is like okay, seventy years old now. Okay, and most of these sidekicks are upper sixties. Mm -hmm. And low seventies as well too. You know, I didn't get to listen to him when he, when he was the way he was that made himself famous. Okay, he used to be rebellious. He was the, this shock jock title. He would do all kinds of controversial stuff. Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. made him famous. You know, you, people either hated him or loved him. I didn't get a chance to listen to him because I was doing my own show, or I'd be in a market where he wasn't carried. So I didn't get a chance to listen to a replay or anything. So I really had no idea what he sounded like till later, listen to some of the old stuff and he'd go into a new market and belittle the morning guy there and stuff. And I mean, he would have the butt uh, bongo stuff playing when we come in, he played the bongos in their ass and stuff. Uh, lesbian dating game. He'd drop the M word, the F word or whatever. Just, you know, it was just very offensive. All the people, what's changed though, over the years, I guess, because, uh, you know, because he got older, it's just, he's, he now knows it's just like, Mr. It's a safe place to go to be interviewed. You're not going to get any hard questions. He's going to lob softballs to make you happy, look good. You don't have to worry about being pressured into anything. And all the stuff he used to do to make him famous is, is my question. He doesn't do anymore. You right. know, we are still offensive. You know, if, 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 we, if we, don't, we don't force it to be there, if something comes up, we're going to say it, we're going to do it. We're not going to hold back, you know. That's uh, right. But he does. He doesn't do that stuff anymore. He has these people on the end. These are boring. They suck. He, he wants to be known. He wants to be known as the best interviewer that there is. And he wants to dig and ask questions nobody else asks, but not, nothing really probing or exciting. It's just it's just because you know, they know it's safe to go on there. It's just like that. Yeah. That's what he wants to be known as now. It's a safe place to go and all that stuff that would he would never have guests on before. He'd be terrified to go on because the, the stuff that would come up would be awful. So no one ever went on his show. It's just a total flip. You know, so because he's gotten older, the one thing he still does in the show, him and his guys are talking about jerking off all the time, which is like, you don't hear a bunch of 70-year-old guys talking about jerking off. It's just like, you know, what's that wrinkle thing? Let me see if I can get that to jerk off some more. It, you know, it's just it's just crazy what he's become. That they still talk about, but on the controversial stuff with people, he's actually apologized to people he's made fun of in the past. He walked up to Kathleen Gifford and goes, I'm sorry, all those years I picked on you. So I'm going, you don't have to apologize for that. It's just all part of showbiz. You know, you're just having some fun. Entertainment. or it, Exactly. Theory. He did the apologizing tour. And now he's all, wants to be known as Mr. You know, interviewer guy. would be taken seriously. I'm going, why? You know, it's just not what, that's not what, that's what, what you built your thing on. Made you famous, you know? 
I know I'd never particularly care for him or the milkman or um uh, the what the milkman. You mean the man cow thing? The milkman. Oh, the man there you go. You <laughs> see the milkman. There's the milkman. <laughs> Sounds like some yeah. horror movie. Oh, beware the milkman. <laughs> but not a bad idea. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah, no, uh, I never liked the shock shock thing. To me, it was just just meh. Didn't like the title that. shock shock. I thought I never liked that name, but <laughs> but I did a lot of crap. I mean, I did stuff, but I, I would never apologize for it because we did it for show. Did mm -hmm. it offend some people? Sure. Did it offend people? I was doing it too. Sure. I got I got choked, punched, slapped. Seriously. By guest on the show, you know, and I, I just, I just go to him after the. I hope you feel better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, he wears Kevlar underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I would just tell him, like, we got a commercial. I'm going, what are you doing? Said, we're, we're doing this just for fun. See Black that smock he's wearing right fun. now, huh? See that smock he's wearing right now, ladies and gentlemen. That a blood stain? Yeah, look at that. No stains, nothing on it. But that, that you could shoot him with a twelve bore uh, gun, and it bounced right off it. Bounce right off, man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe even the point is that won't won't go through. So we're baby boomers now, Costa. Oh, if something yeah. comes up, we're not going to force stuff. But if we're talking about something, are we going to hold back from being controversial on it? You know, like he is now. I just, you know, why? Yeah, why I, I don't why? see why. I mean, in, unless you're going to be just particularly unpleasant and with no particular reason for it. But I mean, it's like um, well, you may say we're, we're we're not doing it for a reason to be picking on Lizzo. I mean, come on. Well, Lisa, we did a good job on that because we canceled her, and now she's canceled. Well, she's people gone. say people would say it would be offensive to her. Or I was I was offensive to the people in Vegas who talked to her, associated with Liberace and stuff like that. You know, so mm -hmm. I was offensive to when we had the the gay wrestler on. I mean, just you know, <laughs> here we go, take it off the list already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's so, so well. I mean, when we had King Charles on, they would say, "Oh, say. Jesus Christ, you offended his wife." I mean. Well, no, you just spoke the truth. <laughs> I'm just thinking of this. So these are things we've done in the past year. That's yeah, we've been held back, right? No, and why should we? Well, that's what I'm saying. So well, why have you stop doing the thing that made you famous? And here's the thing: here, these guys are all 70 years old, but they, but Stern's audience, the, his biggest size is still men. No kidding. But the age is still 25, 54. You know. What 25 year old is going to be in the Howard Stern now? I mean, when you're when he was younger and you're 25, then you could see the appeal. You yeah. Know. Uh, now, just say like old guys jerking off and, you know, old guys still doing fart jokes, but now they want to be known as serious people. They're talking about serious topics. I'm a serious interviewer. I'm a probing interviewer. I'm a better interviewer than anybody is or out there. That, that's that's really one of the Fart man. Well, well, you know, fart man. I I I, I got to give him credit for that. I mean, that's all fun stuff. It made him famous, and it was entertaining. He was good. He was the guy who who did it. I guess they'd say he broke the rules, even though there are other people like me doing it as well too. Mm -hmm. But you know, he got the attention. It's a little bit over the top, and it's market size, those type of things. So that was fun. People, you know, I never even knew what he was doing until I quit doing it myself. I listened to small stuff. Oh, that's pretty good. That's not good. That's pretty good. And and. And that was great because I didn't want to be influenced by anybody. I just doing what I wanted to do and do what I wanted to say. I'm mm -hmm. surprised. That's all. Kamala was on there. And he just lobbed the softballs, didn't hit her with anything like he would normally do. So it's just it was an easy peasy interview. And it's just like, you know what? We're why talking, we're talking? We were talking about Lizzo just a bit ago. I'll go and back to that. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite topic. Here's the thing, right now in this lovely little market of Columbia, South Carolina. Yep. There's one station here or uh, two stations that have employed, and this is a little difficult, I think, to say, because I'm sure they're wonderful women, but these are morbidly obese women. Um, who have are, now, they, are these TV people or radio people? TV people. Oh, my God. Oh, and, that's and, you sent uh, me a picture of. Oh, you're, you're kidding. Yeah, I, I did. And, and could you not see the East Coast of America? No, you could not. She's a weather girl. Yeah, she, she was. She was huge. Really big. I mean, there's big and there's big. She, that's morbidly obese. And there's yeah. three of them. I can't remember the other. Another one's um, like a, a part time anchor who's equally as massive. And are I, they, I, I these, brand, these brand, new, these brand new people now. These are new hires, right? Yeah, these are all new little um, reporter cubs, you know. Well, I mean, hiring for diversity for TV is one thing, which I think is, is, is great. I'm all for that. <laughs> but not having to hire because you, you don't want to body shame. This is TV, man. Yeah. Yeah, you got you can you got to fit in that box, man. You know? <laughs> I got something for the new hires that you're at. Here we go. 
Oh, there you go. <laughs> that's for Lizzo. And that's for your new hires there in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Obviously, love some of that Southern cooking, which we all oh, know. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the ham hocks and, and collard greens and, and fried chicken and stuff. Well, my thing is, like, okay, people grew up listening to me, and mm -hmm. they're tuning in now to this podcast. Do you think they'd be happy if they tuned in and I wasn't what they remembered that I was? If I was something totally different? So I mean, the point I'm trying to make, if you grew up with Stern, okay, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've been away for a while, and he's making this new, like, a comma, it's, oh, let's hear what he sounds like now. And you go back and listen, and he's nowhere near close to what he used to be, what made you attracted to him in the first place. I'm saying, why would you stop doing the things that made you successful? It's a it's well with him in particular. I mean, it's just kind of well. I suppose you could just say he grew up or he got he burnt out on trying to be so. But they're still doing fart jokes and jerking off at seventy. You know, yeah, they just want to be known as I'm Mister Interview. No one interviews people like me. You know, that's starting to sound like Trump. <laughs> no one's better than me. Well, that used to that used you to be where tell I'm me that. Too. I used to be one of his most frequent guests was Trump. You know, that's it's mm -hmm. on Howard's show where Trump famously said that, you know, he, 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 his daughter's hot and he would date his own daughter. You know, now those are revelations that came on the Trump show. That's, that's, that's good stuff. And, mm -hmm. he, and, they, and he's got that using it later. He's going, listen to what the pervert guy is. He's running for president. He wants to, wants to bang his own daughter, you know? <laughs> that's great audio. Now, doing the show he does now, he would never get someone to say something like that. Because they wouldn't talk, they wouldn't broach that subject at all, you know. Just like when Kamala did the "Who's your daddy?" She, what she normally talks about in the show, she pulled back and pulled nice because she's got the vice president running for president on the show. So instead yeah. of just keep doing what you're doing, well, that's a little just, different. That's oh, a little... go for it, man. We, we would oh, go yeah. for it. But yeah. I mean, I can understand Kamala. Someone, ah, your assistant has arrived, huh? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> He's just talking yeah. to me. Shut up. Okay. I can't tell you anything. <laughs> can't hear the TV. Well, you, this you, is a you golden opportunity. You had the vice president of the United States, you know, mm -hmm. another female running for president because we had to have one yet. And she's right there in a close race, right there in your studio. You're going to have to have some fun here. I mean, you just can't all of a sudden. I'm oh, telling yeah. you, when you hear Kamala on our show next week, it ain't going to be like the Who's Your Daddy show, the View show, or the Howard Stern show. Nope. We're going to go for stuff. Who was it? Who was it? She used to date, and then people were giving her a hard time about uh, the yeah. mayor of San Francisco. You talking about the mayor of San Francisco? That guy? That was another one. There's uh, another one. Hmm, okay. Can't remember who it was. Oh, was it Laval Burton or somebody like that? Really? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, think no, she I, I can't actor. remember either. But it would be you know yeah, you she can... an actor at one point. So what? We yeah. all we all have past lives. We grew. We're growing up. We're dating people. You know, it's just as long as I'm that... growing up. Costello likes likes goats and farm animals, you know. So, well, I got that from the, my time in West Virginia, you know. But you outgrew that. It's, it's different. I, I did. It got boring yeah. and painful. <laughs> <laughs> we think you outgrew. Maybe maybe that's why you don't leave the house because you don't want to leave the goat behind. Who's going to watch my baby? <laughs> yeah, it's the dog now, you know. Spank, spank the goat. Spank, spank the goat. <laughs> <laughs> spank the goat, spank the goat. Actually, I was, I was watching a thing called um, Clarkson's Farm. Now, Jeremy Clarkson's very famous in England, and you may have seen him on Top Gear. You ever watched Top Gear? Afraid not. You'd enjoy it. It's it's gone now, but it's it, a car show. Is that a car yeah, show? It ran for like go oh, ten years, and then it became, that guy, guy his name is Ant. Is he he's a guy on Top no. Gear? Different well, story. that might be after them. They, they, he was in the original anyway, and he's well known for being a complete dick and very right wing. And um, so, you know, he'd, he'd say terrible things, just like a bit like a uh, uh, guy there. And um, anyway, so he, he went out and he bought a farm. All right. He just said, I'm going to buy a farm. We go, you can't just buy a farm. You can't just be a farmer. Well, um, he made a TV series of all the fuck ups and everything that he did. First year was a total disaster. Second year, almost as bad a disaster. And um, then he opened up like a little restaurant on his ground, and the county council said, Nope, you can't do that. Everything he's tried to do, the council said, Nope, they just got it in for him because they hate him. And um, so now we're on series three, and he just he just bought a bunch of pigs because he thought it would be fun. That'd be fun. I like pigs. 
and he, he had his uh, he had he had to sell half of his cow uh, herd because uh, it had been a very dry winter. Anyway, it's a really good show. If you get a chance, watch it. What's it's, it on? Uh, it's on Prime. Prime. Oh, it's Amazon. Okay. Right. Yeah, you'll see it. It just says. Uh, oh, a guy who bought a farm called Top Gear for. I you thought it'd be you know. No, 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 no. The, the name of the name of the <laughs> that's his old TV show. Um, I remember the name of the farm. It's quite, quite amusing. Billy buys a farm. Tinkley Dale or something. Costello yeah, does goats. Something like I don't know. like it. Yeah, but I, I think you quite enjoy this. Of course, if you watched early okay. Top Gear, it's funnier because you know how this guy used to be. Okay. And now he's turned Mr. Con uh, uh, conservationist and. Uh, well, that's, there you go. So you can, but you haven't answered my question, Costello. So yes, could we, as since we're becoming aging baby boomers, do we? <laughs> change and not be that way anymore not, you know stuff that we used to do to get us canceled should we stop doing that i don't think so you follow the footsteps of you know who and just be i know no 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 no, 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 no. I know. no we, we, we what we need to do is to get hold of prince uh king charles again um <laughs> and no, i and, i'm gonna be nasty again i can't help it i just can't help it so <laughs> It's going to have to be nasty. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not going to be nasty with Kamala. We're going to ask, but outside we do next week. Mm -hmm. When Kamala's on, she goes to the, the final home stretch of the election. She's, she's great. She's going to be in our space. She's doing some podcast stuff. She's going to do ours. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the questions that each of those people should have asked based on the way they used to be or based on the way their show is supposed to be. Like, the, who's your daddy? I'm going to ask her questions that she, that she would normally ask guests on her show. But she pulled back on because... She had Kamala on, okay? So we're, we're, we're going to yeah. ask them, okay? Yeah, and let's we're gonna ask, ask questions, talk about things that maybe would go Eastern with you was actually being the way it used to be. So we're going to cover those things. We're going we're gonna to do what they didn't do. We'll do that. Uh, we'll be the cancel guys yeah. as opposed to the original. And, you'll see we're, and after next week's show, you'll see why we're going to be canceled again. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> no more political people coming on this show. But 60 Minutes covered the serious stuff. If you did the homie girly stuff, which is great, we don't have to cover that stuff. We got to cover the the who's your daddy and the stern thing, and just mm -hmm. who's your daddy? Wait, yeah, but you'll see. Well, it'll be fun. Will she hang up and walk out? Or you know, maybe there's a good high possibility. Yeah, well, that's never happened before. Oh yeah, that's never happened at all. <laughs> oh no, no. Although King Charles didn't hang up, he kind of, kind of. Oh, I couldn't believe it. Man. He just hung in there and just took a beating. <laughs> He did. He did. <laughs> this guy's punch drunk, or he's not listening, or something. I don't know, but he's, he hung around, took a beating. But I guess I that point, for that. Uh, hey, what are you, what are you watching? Hmm? So you gave me a hint. So you're watching that. Are uh, you cutting out there? Unfortunately, are you talking about um, the farm? Are you show? Streaming anything? Now that you like any shows you like? Well, the farm show. I just, I just got. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, Prime back. I, I let I let it run out. You got Netflix, right? No, don't have Netflix. Really? Yes. And two of my favorite shows. I'll only gonna break because two of my favorite shows are coming out. One came out last night. One's coming out next week. Uh, a continuing series. One, mm -hmm. Outer Banks. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Season, season four. I'm hooked on it. Awesome, awesome. Love Outer Banks. I live, I live down that area for a while. So it's like, even though they film it in Charleston, South Carolina, but it's still. It's the show's out of banks. It's kind of cool. And also the other one, because I read all the books, uh, The Lincoln Lawyer. Oh. Don't get too excited. I was going to go, yeah, that was like boring <laughs> shit to me. I knew. <laughs> the Outer Banks. What, what is that about? Is that just just like everyday kind of? It's about the uh, the Pogues, who are the island people. Just, you know, not don't have money. Just just living there, living the life, hanging on the water. Just, no, doing, okay. just laid back, no money. Against the rich people, you know, and it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of like the poor gets against the rich, and they all kind of meld, and and they they are in trouble. They get they treasure hunt. They do all these fun things. It's kind of fun. So it's just oh, okay. I'll give it, it. Maybe I'll get Netflix for a week or two, and or a month. I guess you have to buy. And Lincoln Lawyer is based on a series of some great books and good stories. So I've read mm -hmm. all the Lincoln Lawyer books. They're really good. Now that this is season three, it's just it's just good. You know, because the guy is yeah. a good writer. So. Just, just a little hint there. If you're looking for something to watch, because it's like fall time. It's like in, remember network TV and always debut their new shows. They're doing the same thing on streaming services now too. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you, oh, you ever watch that show years ago on regular network TV called Salem's Lot? 
You remember I that? remember it, but I didn't watch it. Remember David Soul was in it, who was one of the guys in Starsky and Hutch, Stephen King. They, they've remade uh, Salem's Lot. I watched it last night. So, was it, was it worth it? Hey, man, it was good. It's Halloween time, man. Vampire. You know, you know what? Um, when, a, when Allison was here, we went to the movies. So we went to go and see Beetlejuice. Oh, shit. How was that? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Well, um, for as much as we could enjoy, because there were people behind us talking, and uh, that's a story in itself. It was good. Well done. It was well done. And it was just, it was it was a good movie. Um a lot of plots to kind of tie up. So it was a, I could make some criticism to it, but basically it was good and it was enjoyable. So now, it, was a, it was a good, long awaited sequel and it was still fun. Yes. Us, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the interesting thing about it wasn't shocking because we know what Beetlejuice looks like now. Yeah. Right. So the, the shock value really wasn't there. Um, it could have made two movies out of it with the plots they had going. It's still funny though. Get funny. It's it's Michael good. Keaton doing Beetlejuice again. Yep. So he's the writer was back. Glad to see him back. But anyway, so there's this um, couple with a little kid in there sitting in the back row, and the movie starts and everything. And Allison looks at me. And she goes, "Dad, I'm going to go get the manager." And I didn't really hear, hear these people to get in with. So she gets the manager, and the manager comes in. And says, yeah, figure we'd have trouble with them. So. They come in and shuts them up for five minutes and they start again. And I like turn around and give them the evil eye and go, Hey, shh, would you mind? Come on. Nah, shut them up for a few more minutes. And then they get going again. And oh, wait, were they talking about the movie to the movie or they're just talking oh, about was, something unrelated? Well, the kid was the little kid was there playing a game, which we could hear that too. Right. So, you know, you could hear doop, 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 doop. Beep, 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 and so on. And uh, anyway, so, and I mean, who takes like a two or three year old to go and see Beetlejuice? I mean, come on. It's should, all right. We know it's it's cool. Cool. Little ear, earbuds in there, something so you can't hear the game. Let the kid just knock himself out and play a game. Well, it like the, was it the stadium seating type thing you went to, right? Good stadium seating. It's a little, it's a little theater. It's oh, a you went to a little dinky ass thing. The mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. So, but, so I turn around and said, hey, you know, because there's like two or three other people in, in the, in the, um, theater as well and i just you know i just got pissed off and i just i just turned and said hey you mind and she just ain't nobody gonna tell me how to use my baby i'm going and i just turned and said what's your baby gonna do with it shut up <laughs> <laughs> ain't yeah. nobody gonna tell me how to raise my baby so you make a note here costello making new friends everywhere oh nah, yes well our new friends were waiting for us outside when we came out i was going to say probably <laughs> probably baby daddy out there probably want to kick your white ass outside the theater there oh, right he was, actually funny enough he was white but oh anyway. big old redneck okay so you got you pissed off a maga and, person. Yeah, and, they, <laughs> and they uh they were waiting for us outside and, and they wanted to do what well nothing we just walked past them allison said don't get involved dad because she knows who i am Oh, they yelling at you as you walked out? Were they giving you shit? Well, or actually, they just kind of gave us a look, and we just kept walking. Like you the redneck out. stink eye. Yeah, like yeah, that's exactly you know, one of those type of fights. Like, well, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do? You start. No, you start. What are you going to do? Yeah. So we sauntered just down the street, turned the corner, and ran like hell. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can still run. I like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it just amuses me that Allison's that way. That she she. Yeah, it's a chip off the old block, you know. It really is. She's like, ah, put up with this. <laughs> she dated a cop for a while. I'm surprised she's that way. Maybe that's why she's coming. She's going to be a cop, you know. She's she's yeah. going for. She the, was with uh, you this time. She wasn't with the big cop dude she used to date. Okay, she's mm -hmm. with you. She's with me. Yeah, not with him. It's <laughs> exactly. Yeah. First come himself. What are you going to do? Going okay. Costell's down. He's down. Get him in. Okay. <laughs> get get his walker. <laughs> <laughs> like a dead cockroach with the arms and legs going, ah. that's right. Dad, get up and get him. I can't get up. To get... <laughs> yeah, that's about the way it would be. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that was, I forgot about that part of our, our weekend. It was good. I was going to say, that's an interesting part. That's for sure. Nothing because it, you know, you're, you're paying the money. I don't understand why people do that. They bring a kid. It's like the, the movie's going to be the babysitter or something. Why talk during the movie? But if you got the, the seat is now like big stadium seats, you're not that close to your part. You know, mm -hmm. even if someone was doing that, you wouldn't even pick up on it too much anymore. So you went to one of the old cheapy dinky ass theaters, a little bad oh, seat. It's a little tiny theater. 
That's why I like it because it's the old style theater. There, there are two screens. Is that in Charlotte or is that in South Carolina? That's right on Main Street. It's uh, it was probably here the last time you were here. It's been there forever. It's called the Nickelodeon. That's a really cool little theater. It's oh, in Charlotte or, or in South Carolina? Oh, it was in that's in Columbia. That's it. Well, no one in Columbia. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the town that the land of time forgot. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. <laughs> This that movie you hit the projector back there going D -d 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 -d. <laughs> projector. <laughs> Holy crap, this place is old. Mm, yeah, I mean, you know, you drive across the state line and your speedometer goes backwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad uh, I've got Allison came to see us. She's she's a she's a great girl. I'm glad you had mm -hmm. guys. Look how look how glowing Costello is today. Not yeah. even baby well, like baby, baby, woes, baby boomer story, nothing can upset him. He's so happy. Mm. Yeah, happy, happy, happy. And I was talk talking to my other daughter. She said, yeah, Dad, he looked really good uh, on, because we did a face chat thing, which I personally hate, but anyway. I know you. And um, she said, yeah, Dad, he looked really good. I said, oh, well, thank you very much. It's probably because I shaved. And, um, and she says, yeah, you look a lot better last time I saw you. Now, she'd forgotten I'd been to Vegas, so last time she saw me, I'm lying on my back being, being trolleyed into the OR. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't think I look so great that day. Yeah, yeah. good times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just remember. I, you know, they all came down to to wish me well, which was nice. And um, I guess the uh, 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 the guy who knocks you out, the I can't say that. Anesthesiologist. There you go. There you guys. go. Exactly. I, guess, it. I, I remember him just saying, "Yeah, this will take a few seconds to." That's all I can remember. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. That's great. That's all you want to know. Yeah, then waking up going, I can't breathe. That wasn't any fun. But right. well, at least you used to get canceled when you had surgery and you were sick. When I was mm. sick with cancer, I got a get well card. You know, so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe well, we're gonna have some to die with your stage four cancer. Okay, do my best. All right. <laughs> yeah, because, well, it's, it's, it's been real. It's been nice. It hasn't been real nice, but the time is up. It's been a good time. Next, now come and join us next week. Okay. You know, you've seen the little fun bits of us now. You can see what they call the long form, which this is. And sometimes we have videos in here with music and stuff. Yep, and, yep, yep. All kinds of stuff that some people do take offense at. And we like that. Well, we just want to do we just want to do a clean today. We had some stuff to discuss. And plus, Costa, you're going to give them our new email address, right? All, all uh, you, the stuff we it, got? Indeed. It is uh, cancelledguys at Gmail. Gmail. Oh, easy. How easy? That's pretty easy. There you go. And plus, you can find us on TikTok, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. We are everywhere. And next we week, Gary Miner, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, will be on Facebook. our show. Vice President Harris will be on the show. Their That's final right. push to win this election. Now, damn it, I hope she does. I don't <laughs> want, I'm going to be depressed for four years. So, uh, so we'll, we'll give her our best and do everything we can to push her through. Okay. So she'll be on right. next week. So make sure you join us for that. Okay. Yeah, and it's the canceled guys. I, I stand corrected. And the for our, all of our producers overseas, our two French guys, Anus and Sour, and of course our biggest critic, Costello's sister, who says, "Smile." Okay. <laughs> that doesn't scare you nothing. Will scares that shit. That Halloween right there. We're done, guys. Okay, see you. Bye.